All right, so we are in section 6.3, looking at logarithms. Um, we just talked a minute ago about what a logarithm is, and we're going to continue with that. So it says, if we have logarithm of y with base of b, how do we write that? Well, that's going to be written this way. It's going to be log with the base of b of y. So what this would be asking you is, with a base of b, what is the exponent that would give us an answer of y? <coughs> and we'll come back to that. Common logarithm. If no log, or rather if no base is given, the base is, what would you think? What base do, is our number system in? How many fingers do you have? 10. We use a base 10. So the base is going to be 10. If there's no base given, it's base 10. The way we count is base 10. Once we get to 10, we start over with our numbers again. So if I see log of 1,000, if we solve that, there's no base given. But what does the base have to be? 10. And so this would be saying then, 10 to what power is going to give us 1,000? What's that going to be? 10 to what power would give us 1,000? 3, right? Look at your calculator. Open up your calculator and see if you can find the log button. If you were asked to do log of 1,000, you can go to log. It's right next to the number 7 on your calculator, right there. And I can type in log of 1,000. And it'll give me the answer, 3. Okay? We don't want to use our calculator for all of these logarithms, though. Only if it's something that you absolutely have to. Don't use it for every problem, because when we take the next quiz or test, there are going to be parts where I say, don't use your calculator. There will be some things that you'll have to use it on. All right, a natural logarithm. If you see this right here, that's what we use for natural logarithm. It's ln. That's the letter L. I don't write it like that because now it looks like 1n, so that's why I always put a cursive L. When you have a natural log, the base is always going to be e. Remember, E is that number that we talked about yesterday, or Friday, rather. And remember how E has a value of 2.72, approximately? So when we see natural log, the base is automatically E. It can be written two ways, though. If you have it, something written like that, log base E of X, a better way to write it is just like this, natural log of X. Because if you put this, then everyone knows that you mean a base of E anyway. So it's kind of like overkill to put log base E. So here's the definition of how to switch back and forth. If we have log base B of Y to the X, we find our base. Here's the base B. We can swirl it around now. So it's B to the X equals Y. That's another way of writing it. So if I have a log, I can write it as an exponential, and it's easier to work with then. Because look at this problem. Even if I, I wrote out the 10, it wouldn't have to be there, though. But if I'm going to solve this, this has to be equal to something. Let's just say equal to x. I'm going to rewrite this as an exponential. So I find the base, and I just swirl it around. So 10 to the x equals 100. And what's the answer going to be there? 2. So the answer to this log would be 2. Some helpful things to know about base 10, since we use it so much. What's 10 to the 0 power? 1. What's 10 to the 1st? 10 to the 2nd? What do you notice about this pattern? What does this exponent tell us? How many, how many zeros? Okay. Even this way, 10 to the negative 1 is 1 over 10, or 0.1. See that pattern? 10 to the negative 1 means that you're going to have the number 1 one spot after the decimal. So 10 to the negative 2 means you're going to have the 1 two spots after the decimal. 
that follows all these patterns. 10 to the negative 6 means that it's going to be in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spot after the decimal. So these are all kind of shortcut ways. All right, so now let's look at um, this example right here. So write this down, log 1,000. And without using a calculator, figure out what the answer would be. Abby, what do you think? Three is right. How'd you do it? Mm -hmm. Right, so 10 to the what equals 1,000. Well, we have three zeros, so it's going to have to be to the third. All right, let's do this now. What about log 1 million? Using what I just talked about a minute ago, you should already know what the answer is. Jake, you know it? Six is right. We have six zeros, so therefore it's going to have to be the sixth power. All right, this one. Find your base. Ten to the what equals point zero one. This will do. You know what it would be? Mhm. Mm Very good. What about number five, Caroline? Good. And everyone, what about this one? Log one. Zero. Good. Okay, so that's when we have these nice numbers here with a base of 10. Those are pretty easy to do. All right, flip over to the next page, 167, and go down to the extra practice. I'm going to do the odds with you, and then you're going to go back and do the evens. All it says for us to do is to rewrite the equation in exponential form. Pretty straightforward. We find the base and we just swirl it around. So 10 to the third power equals 1,000. If we did that correctly, it should make sense. It should be a true statement. See, some people write it as 10 to the 1,000 equals 3. That's not right, is it? So it should be a true statement if you have written it correctly. For number 3, find the base. Swirl it around. 10 to the 0 is 1. Because remember, this number is the exponent. The base doesn't change. The base is always the base. This is the exponent, and that is the answer to the problem. Okay, flip over to the back. Now we're going in the other direction. Rewrite the equation in logarithmic form. Find the base and swirl it around. So it's going to be log base 12 of 144 equals 2. Now, maybe I want to check this. We all have different kind of um, levels of calculators. When the calculators first came out, everyone had to do the log logarithms the same way. And then with each version they put out, it got a little better and a little better. Mine's the medium version. If I want to do this problem, I don't have a base of 10. So I can't just type in log of like 1,000 like we did before. So what I have to do is I have to go under map on mine. And I have to scroll down here until I find, ooh, I don't have it on this one. Okay, this is the oldest version then. Do any of the rest of you, like when you go under math, do some of you see log base under math? Okay, if you have log base under math, go ahead and use that. If you do not, though, here's what you have to know. Is that log they say of B is the same thing as log B divided by log A. So if you don't have a way to put in the base, you have to know that log they say of B is log B divided by log A. So on my calculator, this one, like I said, is a little older, I have to do log 144 divided by log 12. And it's going to tell me what the answer is to that, and it's 2. So it works. Anybody have a calculator that they cannot figure out how to do that on? All right. So number 7 is going to be log, find the base. 
swirling around. Okay, so now I want you guys to go back and do the evens in those two sections. I'm going to be doing them too, but don't look up unless you get stuck on something. about finished. Just check your answers. 2, 5 to the negative 2 is 1 over 25. 4, 1 fourth to the negative 3 is 64. 6, log base 20 and 1 over 20 is negative 1. 8, log base 4 of 1 is 0. Okay, now we're going to be evaluating. So evaluating means to solve it. So I can think of this two ways. This means 4 to what power is 64? I can also just put this equal to x, and then I can rewrite it exponentially. So 4 to the x has to equal 64. A lot of people like to write it out that way first. Whoops, that means 6 to the 4, 64. So now, let's do it. What's 4 times 4 times another 4? So it is the answer of 3. If I wanted to check it on my calculator, I have to do log 64 divided by log 4. You guys already have that change of base on there, some of you. Okay, number 11, figuring this out, I'm going to again set this equal to x. So I'm going to have to do 2 to the what power equals 1 over 32. So thinking about this, first of all, how do I get the 2 to go to the bottom? What's it going to have to be? Negative. So I know the answer has to be a negative. And what is 2 times 2? Times 2 again. Times 2 again. Times 2 again. So there we go. So it's going to be negative 5. All right. You guys do number 10 and 12. What did you get for number 10? Zero is correct. Who has number 12? Anybody get number 12? Nobody got it? Anisha? It is a half. Baxter, is that what you were going to say? Yeah, and how did you guys know that? Baxter, go ahead and explain how you knew it. So, well, I did it in the calculator first. So that, that would be the easiest way to do it. But then it would be... Okay. Can, and Lisa, could you explain it? Or? Yeah, that's right. So the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 25 is 5. So to write a square root, I can't just say x equals square root, but what's the exponent that does the square root? 1 half, right? So that's the reason the answer is going to be 1 half there. Okay. All right, these are the last two. These are pretty tough here. This right now is an exponential form. We need to think of this as 13 to the a equals b. That's really what it is. 13 to the a, it's just that a is very complicated, equals b. So to rewrite this, I would write it as log base 13 of b equals a. Everybody agree with that? So I'm going to want to rewrite this now. This is log base 13, and I'm just going to put this equal to x, of x 
equals back here. This would be, all of this right here is my exponent. So all of that's going to have to be my answer. Log base 13 of 6. Now I'm trying to solve for the answer to this. So if I have log base 13 of x equals log base 13 of 6, what does x obviously have to be then? 6. So the answer to all of that is just going to be 6. This one is already written as a log. So how do you think I solve it? I rewrite it as a what? This was an exponent. I wrote it as a log. This is a log. I rewrite it as an exponent. All right. So look at what this actually means here. This is natural log base e. The base is always e of, let's just call this a. We're going to call all of this a equals b. So if I wanted to rewrite natural log base e of a equals b, I would write it as e to the b equals a, right? Just swirling it around. So this one, I'm going to say this equals, I'm not going to call it x. The reason why is because there's an x already in the problem. So I need to call it another variable, a, b, c, d, whatever you want. I'm going to go with a. So I would rewrite this as e to the a equals, swirling it back around, e x to the third, e to the x cubed. So then I'm trying to solve for a. I'm trying to solve for the answer. So what's it going to have to be? x cubed. So that simplified would be x cubed. Those two are pretty tough, and there are more of those in the book if you feel like you need to look at them. I'll do just one more. I'll make one up. Okay, let's say we've got, which do you think was harder, 13 or 14? 14, okay. So let's say we've got log base 6 of 5x to the 4th. Um, uh, that's not going to make it, but log base 6 of 6x to the 4th. Let's do that. Okay, so to solve this then, I want to rewrite it. I want to have to, first of all, say it's equal to something, but I don't want to call it x because I've got x to the fourth, so let's call it a. So to rewrite it then, it would go 6 to the a has to equal, back here, 6x to the fourth. And so what's, a gonna, what's the answer going to have to be? x to the fourth. And like I said, if you still need some help with that, just look in your book and there's a couple of examples you can refer to. Questions? All right, let's look over your homework. You guys had some problems to do. Or just a couple of even. Okay, so on number two. Number two, it says, tell whether this function represents exponential growth or exponential decay. Well, I can see it's going to be exponential growth because the exponent's greater than zero and the coefficient's greater than zero. As long as that's positive and that's positive, it's always going to be exponential growth. For 23, we had to do some matching. I hope you did this the easy way. Just plug in zero for x. Anything to the zero power is one. So I know this is going to have the point zero one. Well, both of these have the point zero one. So this has a positive exponent. It has to be the one that has growth. So it has to be letter D. For number 24, E to the zero is still one. But this time, this is going to be a negative in the exponent. So it has to be exponential decay. So it has to be letter A. For number 25, plug in zero. Anything with zero is one times four. Zero, four, that's all it can be, B. And then 26, e to the 0 is 1 times 0.75 has to be letter C. The next even we had was over here, number 42. So 42, it says use the graph to complete each statement. F of x. F of x means y. So y approaches what as x approaches positive infinity? Well, take the graph and just go down and follow it. As x gets bigger and bigger, what's happening to y? Where is it going? To infinity, right. 
And then this is saying y approaches what as x approaches negative infinity. Here's the function, follow it out. As x goes to negative infinity, y does not go to negative infinity. The y value is just approaching this horizontal asymptote. So what's y going to be approaching? Negative 3. Good. All right, did you need some help on any of these? Uh, Sydney? Yes, and the, the common one. Let's look at 27 and 29. So these are those problems where they want us to get it into this uh, y equals 1 plus r to the t form. Or y equals 1 minus r to the t. One of those two ways. And on 27, the problem that we start with is y equals e to the negative 0.25t. We'll go ahead and do 29. 29 is y equals 2e to the 0.4 to the t. Y bar t. Well, in order to get them into this form so that we can see that percent rate of change, I'm going to have to do e to the negative 0.25. So I go to my calculator. I've got to put it in e to the negative 0.25. I get this answer, 0.7788. So I know another name for this is going to be e to the negative 0.25 is 0.7788 to the t. But that's still not quite right. I do want the exponent to just be a t, but I have to have a 1 plus or a 1 minus. So this is going to have to be 1 minus something. So I say 1 minus, that answer is what? 0.2212. So this is going to be 1 minus 0.1 or 2212 to the t. And so once I have it in this form, this right here, that's going to be my percent rate of change. So it's going to be a 22.12 percent decay rate. Or we can call it um, percent rate of change, whatever you want to call it. So that's the decay percentage rate. Okay. For this one, we already have our A value. So said you could leave the A there. So the A is fine. But I have to get rid of that 0.4. So I have to do E raised to the 0.4. Gives me 1.492. I'll pick it out four decimal places to the t. Okay, so now rewriting that, that's going to be y equals 2, 1 plus 0.4918 to the t. And so that's going to be a 49.18% uh, rate of change. Okay, makes sense? Anything else? Okay, good job. Let's roll the dice.